I'm going to show you how I created this cinematic title animation using Apple Keynote and iMovie. All right, we start things off here in Keynote with Keynote open. I'm going to go up to the top menu and select File, New. And from the theme chooser, I select the basic black theme and hit Create. And it opens up to the Keynote editing interface. I'm just going to select and delete this placeholder text so that I have a blank slide. Then I'm going to go up and select the document settings for my project. Then I'll go down near the bottom and select slide size. And from the menu, select custom slide size. And in the field for width, I'll enter 3840. And for the height, make sure it's set to 2160. That's 4K resolution. I set my slide to 4K to help me later on in iMovie. Next, I'm going to add my title text to this slide. So I'll go up to the top toolbar and select the text button. And I get the default text box in the middle of the slide. I'm going to double click on the text box and type in the title for my production. Furious in all caps. Now I'm going to format this text a bit. So I'll select the text then go up and select the format button. Then the text button. I'll select the font menu and from the list, select impact. All right, I'm going to leave the color white but I'll bump up the font size to 700 points. All right, then I'm going to export my slide here as an image. So I'll go up to Keynote's top menu and select File, Export to Images. I'll leave the slide set to all since I only have one slide. Under Format, I'm going to select PNG and I'll deselect export with transparent backgrounds because I don't need that at the moment. And I'll hit save. And I'll save out the image. All right, still here in Keynote, I'm going to add a new blank slide by going up to the top left and selecting add slide. And from the menu, I'll go down and select blank to create a new blank slide. So with my new blank slide selected, I'm going to import the graphic that I just exported out of Keynote. So I'm going to go up to the top toolbar and select Media, Choose, then I'll navigate to that exported graphic, and I'll select it and insert it onto the slide. And there's my graphic. All right, I'm going to click off of the slide so that it's deselected. Then over here on the Properties panel, I'm going to change the color of the slide background so that I can see what I'm doing. So I'll click on the black color chip and from the swatch, select the blue color. I'll select my graphic again. And back over in the inspector, I select the image button and then go down and select remove background. Now I'm going to remove the white fill of the lettering by clicking on the center of a letter, then dragging out the selection circle till it reads 100%. Just before the screen or the slide turns red. That's bad. We don't want that. So there's the blue slide background showing through the now transparent letter. I'll go ahead and remove the rest of the letters. And then I'll hit done. And there's my stenciled title or title mask. I'm going to click off of the slide again to deselect it and back under format slide, I'll go back down to the background section and select color fill. And from the menu this time, I'm going to select no fill. This makes the slide background transparent. Now you can see a few thin slivers of white from the letters. The background removal tool in Keynote is not perfect. It's not Photoshop, but for my purposes, this is fine. There's going to be so many other things going on that this will barely, if at all, be noticeable. But if this isn't good enough for you, you can always create your stencil mask in a dedicated image editor. All right, I'm now going to export this edited graphic. So back up to File, Export to Images. This time I'll select Slides from and enter 2 to 2 to export just my second slide. I'll make sure Format is set to PNG. And this time, make sure Export with Transparent Backgrounds is checked. 
because I want the slide background to be transparent so that I can see through those letters. I'll export and save the file. And that's it for Keynote. Let's head over to iMovie. All right, here we are in iMovie, and I have this project that I created for my title sequence. I'm going to bring in my stenciled graphic, that image mask I created in Keynote. I'm just going to drag and drop it into the media browser from the desktop where I saved it. And there it is. Doesn't look like much, but it's there. Now for the fun stuff. I have this very cool video clip of fire in the media browser. That's going to be the background for my title animation. I got this video clip for free from Pexel.com. So I'll click on the clip to select it all, then hit the E key on my keyboard to add it to the timeline. And there it is. Next, I'll grab my stencil graphic and place it on top of the fire background and then stretch it out so it covers the entire fire clip. And if I play the timeline, you can see the fire clip playing through the text mask. It's very cool. Now you may be asking, Mike, why didn't you just make the text green in Keynote and then just use the green screen effect in iMovie to punch out those letters? Yep, you can do that and it works great. But if I did it that way, I would use up all of the functionality of this overlay track. I wouldn't be able to do anything else. Creating the alpha channel, the transparency in Keynote, allows me more flexibility and creative options here in iMovie. So right now my text mask is in cutaway mode. So I can go up to the cutaway settings and bring down the opacity a bit. And now some of that fire background shows through. Or I could switch the overlay track to picture in picture. And now I can animate this title using keyframes. I can even switch the overlay to green blue screen. And I get a similar effect to using the cutaway setting with the opacity down a bit, but with a subtle, almost blended look, like one of Photoshop's blending modes. I'm going to leave the overlay track set to the green blue screen and hit the blue check mark to take the change. This looks pretty good, but I'm going to add a few things to really make this title cinematic. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is add a zoom animation to my title using the good old Ken Burns effect. So I'll select the title clip, then go up to the toolbar above the viewer and select the cropping tool, and things all of a sudden went dark. That's because the viewer is only showing the title graphic right now. So from the cropping style menu, I'll select Ken Burns, then I'll select the end frame of the Ken Burns effect, and I'll shrink it down as far as it will go. And then I'll place it around the middle of the frame. And I'll hit the blue check mark to lock in my settings. I'll play back. And there's my zoom animation, which is why I created my title graphic in 4K in Keynote. I knew I wanted to zoom in and keep things as sharp as possible. Now you may be noticing this sort of scan line pattern across the graphic when I play back. That's just iMovie reducing the preview resolution so that it can maintain the speed of the animation. When I pause playback, you can see the graphic goes back to full resolution. This will look fine when it's exported. All right, a few more things. I'm going to add a fade at the end of my text mask graphic. So I'll select the graphic on the timeline, then hover over this little fade handle at the end. Then while holding down the Option key on my keyboard, I'll click and drag the fade handle to add a fairly long fade out to the graphic. Holding down option allows you to adjust the beginning or end fades on the clip independently. All right, let's see what this looks like. All right, let's take this title sequence up a notch with some audio. I've got some battlefield sound effects and some dramatic music, both from Epidemic Sound, that I'm going to add to my project here.
And last, I'll go over and open settings and turn on fade in from black and fade out to black. All right, here's the final exported title animation.